Over 25,000 people are expected. Hotels are full, flights are full. It started smallish. It was a local event, right? A national event. We were three, four people working at Eman's flat. But it grew so fast. We cannot believe it. The entire business relies on that one conference. Everything was still shut down. No events were happening. So we said, let's do an event in Dubai, and where we've never been. Sigma is a mammoth project. It was important for Malta to get an event of size. We had to go digital, so we had to invest a huge amount of money. I needed to make sure that the event doesn't let the country down. The first show remains one close to hearts, right? It started in 2014. It was at the Bay Arena. It was roughly 1,200 delegates. Mostly from Malta, very few people traveled in was a local event, right? A national event where we had a few exhibitors. Less than 15, I would say. We were actually working at Eman's flat. So we were three, four people all around the dining table. So it was like a very small space, but a great, great vibe. But it grew so fast. We cannot believe it. Never in my wildest dream would I foresee that Sigma in 2014 would become the international conference it is today. We never looked back together with Eman and we always had a better year every year. It's already reached a point of saturation, right? The venue is what it is. It's Sigma maximizes the full space of the venue. Best and worst moments probably start when you're at your desk and Eman walks in and says, I had an idea. When Eman calls you, I'd like, I've got an interesting proposal and we discuss. He said, I'd like to have another tent. Those who have been to MFCC know what the venue is like. We had to build it next to the MFCC to cater for the demand in, uh, in booths, the demand in uh, delegates. Play big, we have to act big. When you go to an exhibition like this, uh, you are usually very excited because you're gonna meet a lot of people and you have a lot of meetings. I remember when we opened the doors, and I saw everyone buzzing. I said, this is it, There's the, this show is going to stay. And this is what Malta needs. Malta needs this quality of shows. So I think a lot of the Maltese operators was really much looking forward to it. You have a lot of delegates coming from far outside Europe who are coming to Malta, several of them for the first time. And they realize how there's an entire ecosystem within a five mile radius. <laughs> November is a challenging month for the industry. Yes, Sigma doesn't help only the gaming industry. I speak to hoteliers and they're brimming with activity. Well, Sigma has always been an event that is uh, uh, looked to as it brings in a lot of people into the island and it fills our hotels and our restaurants. Booking a room during Sigma, the price is likely to be twice as expensive as the peak of summer. During that week of Sigma, hotels are full, flights are full, taxis are full. You don't, literally, you don't find a taxi. The first time that took place here in 2017, I remember our offices were at the Millennium Stand and I looked through the window and I've seen so many people and taxis. I've never seen so many taxis in my life. I thought I was in Dubai. Sigma is a mammoth project that involves a lot, a lot of work. We're talking about a thousand exhibitors from all over the world. They all need to have their boots built and then the show needs to be dressed up. Like we have 60 trailers, the number of employees they come in. We have over 500 crew, you know, setting up. There is a lot of planning, a lot of coordination and a lot of works that, that go through for this event. Booking transport, hotels, deciding about the menu for, for the awards. We have the conference team who is researching about the latest trend and topic. Then there's sounds, there's lights, there's, there's so much that goes into this conference. Everyone feeds off this conference. Low points, I would say 2020, when we kept postponing the conference. It seemed like everyone knew that the show wasn't happening, the writing was on the wall. We kept postponing, postponing, postponing. To February 2021, then April 2021, and then eventually we ended up doing it in November 2021. Because we've got to get a better control of that, 
and we have ways of doing that. Uh, we were left with no choice but to push the show to November. We had to go digital, so we had to invest a huge amount of money on an online platform, turning all our conferences digital, because obviously we didn't want to stop doing what we did. It was one of the hardest years, as in COVID hit us very hard. As an events company, you lose a lot of traction. It was extremely painful for me because the entire business relies on that one conference in a year. COVID hitting the company, not just financially, was hard. Hard for the company, hard for the employees, hard for the motivation of everyone not being able to go outside, having to wear the masks, not knowing how long the company would survive. Because every penny comes out from that one conference. You know, you remove that one conference, you wipe out an entire revenue for the whole year. So it, it hit hard. COVID hit very, very hard. Thanks to COVID, we pushed our international mandate. So we had Sigma Dubai. And you know, once you see the light, there's no stopping you. So from Sigma Dubai, now we have another five shows on top of that. We have a conference in Toronto, in Sao Paulo, in Brazil, one in Nairobi, in Kenya, one in Malta, and in Limassol, in Cyprus. And we also have a conference in Dubai, as well as Manila. In Dubai, I don't know whether you know, you need permits for everything. Everything was still shut down, no events were happening. So we said, let's do events in Dubai, and where we've never been. We had everything in hand, and still we had the government telling us, yes, of course you've got the permits, yes, of course you've got the permits. Okay, can you send it to us, please? Yeah. <laughs> and we ended up three weeks before and finally got the permit. And that was, that, I think that was the closest sort of skin to bone that we got. Eman is a, he's a true networker. He has an amazing network and, and uh, he is connected to, 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 to everyone in the industry, you can almost say. And, and he's also, I mean, he's very energetic. Well, I know Eman uh, back then at uh, my university years. Um, I always remember Eman as the organizer of events. I don't think there's even a way to, to, to describe Eman, but I would say he's a person that doesn't take no as an answer. Eman is actually a very um, easy person to work with. His knowledge with the industry and that combined with the fact that he loves people makes him a natural leader. He always seems to be like three steps ahead. He sees stuff that no one else can see. I am extremely patriotic about Malta, right? And to me, Sigma was never just about another conference where people do business. Sigma, to me at least, it, it always carried the Malta flag. There are many positive aspects of Sigma. The fact that it has expanded also not to look just at the gaming industry, but also to give, for example, space for startups to pitch about their product. That is something which is very close to my heart. It's not the first time I've had delegates coming for the first time to Malta for Sigma and they decide to set up an office in Malta. And I think uh, Sigma is a good opportunity for startups to showcase their companies because people from all over the world are coming to, to the event. But then at the same time, having these people uh, experiencing Malta will also have and, and it is showing that it has then um, other snowballing effect on the country. So I needed to make sure that the event doesn't let the country down. Eman had approached with the possibility of um, actually creating a foundation. Yeah, the Sigma Foundation is doing a lot of good in uh, remote parts in Africa, remote parts in Southeast Asia, third world places. We've built 10 schools. Um, they stretch across most of the places, most of the areas in Ethiopia to assist poor kids either with their education or with healthcare. Traveling to Ethiopia and inaugurating that, sc that school, that project, that small hospital and knowing that children will be benefiting. Okay, it's on a micro level and that's why we're here today to actually try to inspire people to come on board. It was back in 2018. Uh, I climbed the tallest mountain in Africa called Kilimanjaro and it was for a charity event contributing to building a school in Ethiopia and it was 
till that day one of the best memory in my life. In our smallness, you know, we can be that beacon of light, that beacon of inspiration. And that's what I want to tell these people out there today. Everyone can do something. And uh, there's no stopping the foundation from doing more good. This November is going to be a record breaker. We will have over 600 exhibitors and expecting 25,000 people. We're going to see the island brimming with business activity. And I hope a lot of that activity sticks to Malta, right? I want to see more offices opening up, more gaming companies setting offices on Maltese shores, because this is what makes the Sigma brand proud.